Take a guess, who could tolerate more G-Force? The Spartan or the Wolverine? Really, both actors actually flew in an F-16 with the US Air Force. But how this giant machine took flight simulator training to a whole new level, and why pilots don't move their heads too quickly during long maneuvers. How sitting on a merry-go-round can cause a variety of illusions, and why cats lose their superpowers without gravity is not what you think. You know who can't orient themselves in space? Pussies. Really, pussycats are known for their ability to come down on all fours when dropped. But it turns out they need to feel the force of gravity in order to orient themselves. And kicking them up doesn't help either. But cats are no exception. Pigeons also cannot orient themselves without gravity to the extent that they even fly upside down. And humans are no exception. We could also be disoriented in zero gravity. But it's only when experiencing high amounts of acceleration or deceleration that the human body goes into fight or flight mode. And this is something that military pilots experience during high G maneuvers and astronauts experience during liftoff, re-entry and touchdown. Similar to how a fast spinning drum inside a laundry machine pulls out the water from wet clothes, a quick maneuver during a flight will pull the blood away from the brain down into the pilot's lower torso and legs. The sudden reduction in blood flow deprives the brain of oxygen and the pilot could go unconscious. But there are a number of ways to prevent this. Human centrifuges are devices that test the reaction and tolerance of pilots and astronauts to acceleration above those experienced by gravity of the Earth. Here is a NASA test pilot experiencing eight and a half times the force of gravity. You and I could probably do it too. It's just that with no training, we'd likely pass out before we get to 5Gs. But some people, like Boyd Hagen, can pull immense amounts of Gs and stay with it. Note the rapid increase in heartbeat, which is the body's natural response in order to get more blood to the brain. During a year-long experiment in 1997, Boyd had more than 50 rides at 12 Gs. And out of those, he only experienced one G-force-induced loss of consciousness or G-lock. But how did he do it? The most effective way of preventing G-lock is to perform the anti-G straining maneuver, also known as the M1 maneuver. Basically, the pilot uses intense static contractions of their arm, abdominal, and leg muscles to decrease blood pooling in the lower extremities. This helps maintain sufficient blood flow to the brain. Over time, pilots can build up a greater tolerance to high G-forces when frequently subjected to them, which is why the centrifuge training is so important. The highest G-force endured voluntarily was by Captain Eli Beading Jr. on the daisy track at Holloman Air Force Base in 1958. He spent three days in the hospital after this quick deceleration. The sensor on his chest had recorded an astonishing 82.6 G over a period of 40 milliseconds. In addition to the M1 maneuver, pilots wear G-suits. The suit is zipped up around the abdomen and the legs and is laced up tightly. The G-suit incorporates air bladders that inflate automatically when the aircraft detects higher G-forces. This puts pressure on the pilot's abdomen and legs, which pushes the blood toward the upper body and head. The G-suit adds only about 1 G of tolerance. Oh, and did I mention that the G-suit is not comfortable? It's, it's heavy, it's tight, it's, I mean, it's not comfortable, you're right, it's safe but not comfortable. In fact, advanced technology G-suits were later designed to accommodate a wider range of body types, including female pilots, as part of a larger female fitment program. The actor Gerald Butler once flew with the US Air Force Thunderbirds when he climbed into the cockpit of an F-16. Here, you can even see him practicing the M1 straining maneuver. Practicing. Aside from taking selfies in the cockpit, how many Gs do you think he was able to withstand during all those crazy maneuvers? The answer may surprise you. It's going to make it kind of tough, but we got 9.3 Gs today. Yeah! We don't know exactly how many Gs Hugh Jackman was able to pull. 
but based on that reaction, it must have been less. But even with a G-suit on and performing the M1 maneuver, a pilot could still black out. Which is why pilots are trained to recognize the warning signs before G-lock happens. And that training takes place inside this chamber, with hanging gloves and color charts. During G-lock, less oxygen gets to the brain. The same thing happens inside a hyperbaric chamber, where lower air pressure expands the gloves. But one of the first things affected by lack of oxygen to the brain is vision. It starts with loss of color, where things look a bit grayish. Then the peripheral vision starts to go and turns into tunnel vision. At this point, a person is very close to blacking out. Pilots undergo training in a hyperbaric chamber to familiarize themselves with these symptoms so they can recognize them. These days, instead of sucking the air out of a chamber, ROBD or reduced oxygen breathing devices are used. This device alters the mixture of gases that the trainees breathe in in order to simulate the air mixture at high altitudes. But according to some pilots, nothing is as disorienting and illusory as sitting on a barony chair, which is like a mini merry-go-round. You'd be surprised how easily this device can trick your body, mostly by messing around with your vestibular system, which is located in the inner ear and helps with balance and spatial orientation. For example, trainees are spun around in one direction and after a while are asked to simply turn their head the other way. What you can do is go slowly rotate your head the other opposite direction. Oh. This creates a false tumbling sensation and is known as the Coriolis illusion. This happens when a pilot has been turning long enough for the fluid in the ear canal to move at the same speed as the canal. At that point, an abrupt head movement, say looking at something in a different part of the cockpit, may set the fluid moving, which creates the illusion of turning or accelerating on an entirely different axis. This disorientation may cause the pilot to maneuver the aircraft into a dangerous altitude in an attempt to correct the aircraft's perceived altitude. And that's why pilots avoid doing quick head movements during a long turn. Another illusion is nystagmus, where trainees are told to focus on a reference point while spinning. Upon stopping the barony chair, the trainee's eyes will continue to move around uncontrollably. There are various spatial disorientation flight trainers available, which help familiarize pilots with these disorienting illusions. But the most badass one is Kraken. Kraken's 245,000 pounds of moving mass allows researchers to study applied problems such as spatial disorientation, combined physiologic effects and their countermeasures in a controlled environment. Kraken is a cutting-edge, multi-million dollar piece of technology, well, except for its flight simulator interface, which seems to belong to the 1990s. Having six degrees of freedom, consisting of roll, pitch, yaw, horizontal, vertical, and planetary, this machine allows researchers to create the most realistic motion simulations never before imagined. As we saw before with the barony chair, the accelerations during flight can actually lead to a pilot feeling like the aircraft is doing something that is not. That's where the Kraken comes in because it can take things like g-force, acceleration, pitch, and other inputs from a flight simulator and run them through algorithms that then convert them into actual motion that pilots can feel and familiarize with. But if all the training, the M1 maneuver, and the g-suit fail, this is what happens. Note the rapid decrease in altitude. Feel recover. Feel recover. Feel recover. Feel recover. Thanks to the automatic ground collision avoidance system, an imminent ground collision was detected and a fly-up maneuver to roll the F-16's wings level and upright was initiated to give the student pilot some time to regain his consciousness. A disaster was prevented. But with all the technology available in the 21st century, the problem of constipation still keeps its victims pushing for a better solution.